we're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance, agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign of what's going to happen to these other workers moving forward. And I talked a little... Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that second video just to make you think. And this one is just going to teach you a lesson on half the truth. Remember, the devil comes at you with the truth and then wiggles in the lie. Let's listen in. All right, Chamath, we don't have that much time left. Let's talk rocket ships. First, Bitcoin. That falls into that category because that's what that is. 39,000. Uh, where's it going? I mean, can you play the clip in 2012 and 13 when it was at 200 and everybody was laughing at me on CNBC every time I would talk about Bitcoin? Um, where is it going? It's probably going to 100, then 150, then 200,000. In what period? I don't know. Five years, 10 years? but it's going there. And the reason is because every time you see all of this stuff happening, it just reminds you that, wow, our leaders are not as trustworthy and reliable as they used to be. And so just in case, we really do need to have some kind of you know, insurance we can keep under our pillow that gives us some access to an uncorrelated. Now we had Shamab tell you the truth, that Bitcoin was definitely going up. But he's going to leave out the part that the Fed manipulates it up and down. He's not going to tell you the truth about that. He says the leaders cannot be trusted. But the person who's controlling the dollar and printing the dollars is the Fed. But no one points them out directly. Why? Because they can't. It's not our politicians controlling the money. We know the Fed controls the politicians. Let's listen to Dan Moorhead. In terms of the regulatory treatment, ultimately, of this asset class, is that not a risk? It is. This is obviously very, very early days for a brand new asset class. And so there's going to be volatility on both sides. Um, but, you know, those create the news items that, you know, the migrant using money, uh, using Bitcoin to send money back home to their mom in the Philippines. That doesn't make the news, but that's really what's driving the price. Well, I mean, but what's the ratio of people who are trading it to using it for something besides you know, a, an asset class, a speculative asset class. I mean, uh, you know, $100 bills are used to, to move money and, and Western Union used to move cash all over the world. That stuff doesn't trade at a premium. It doesn't go up three times in the year in value. Sure, but it took Western Union 140 years to get where they're at today. And Bitcoin is only 11 years old and already 7% of all remittance to Mexico is going over cryptocurrency. So it, it's progressing at a much faster rate than the legacy system. And... Now, guys, we had Dan with a straight face, with no smirk, no smile, say that the migrant who's sending money back to the Philippines to the mom is driving the price. That's right, guys. Not the traders, not the betters, not the Fed, but the migrant. Let's listen in to Pomp. It's great to speak with you. Absolutely. Happy New Year to you, too. Um, you know, JP Morgan came out with a note uh, just the other day, 146,000 was the price target on Bitcoin. And one of their major um, theses in that note was that it would be a replacement for gold. And I'm just curious because it seems like all of the other bullish reasons behind Bitcoin have disappeared. And now it's primarily the store of value. Can it continue at the pace that you think it should go with just that one thesis? Yeah, I think, look, one of the key pieces here is why is JP Morgan so conservative, right? If you really think about in the technology world, we talk about 10x improvements of products. Bitcoin is at least 10x better than gold in every way. Um, and so I think that if you just think of a Bitcoin product that is 2x better and market cap kind of follows that, that would put Bitcoin at a million dollars a coin, right? Just 2x gold's market cap. And the key piece here, when I say those numbers, they kind of shock people. But we have to remember that both gold and Bitcoin now we have Papliano, how he gets on CNBC all the time, guys. I have no idea. But guys, he says that Bitcoin is 10x better than gold. 
Now, we know the media has been pushing the store of value. Remember, when you go back to the Bitcoin white paper, it's about making payments, peer-to-peer transactions. But when the powers that be took over Bitcoin and created, of course, Bitcoin Lightning that I talk about all the time, that second layer that we're going to be using to make payments, and they're using that Bitcoin core to sell you the narrative of the actual Bitcoin as the alternative to go, that store of value. And you hear it across the table. That's how you know this is what? This is planned. They all keep saying the same thing. No difference. But if you go to the white paper, that was never the intentions of Bitcoin. We know Bitcoin can scale. By them stopping Bitcoin from scaling, this helped create all these other altcoins. And then, of course, we have DeFi. And then, of course, we have non-fungible tokens, NFTs. So, guys, we see the New World Order is setting up their actual plan. And we also see the agents that are put in front of us to move us to a direction and give us a certain narrative. One of the things that's interesting about Bitcoin is that um, it gets less risky the higher it goes. And that's the opposite of what happens with most stocks. And guys, you know I did a video on Bill Miller. Please go check that out. The higher the asset goes of Bitcoin, the less riskier it gets. And Bitcoin has received 80% corrections three times. But guys, we know how the devil works. The devil comes with you with half truth. They have to tell you truth in order to get in, in order to gain your trust. Then they slap you in the face. Then they take all your money with no gun. You have to understand, guys, when it comes to the new world order, everything is planned out. You have a wonderful day. Why can't you rely on technical analysis and charts alone to have results on the market? I think you can't have not because there's anything wrong with charts and fundamentals. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're going to trade or buy equities or trade indices or gold or, you know, Forex or anything for that matter, it's the intelligent thing to do. I should look at charts and I should look at fundamentals. The problem you have there, which I discovered very early in my trading, is that everybody else is looking at the same charts and the same fundamentals. And the market is looking at the same charts and the fundamentals. The market knows you as a retail trader is looking at that chart and you're going to buy at a certain level and you're going to sell at a certain level. They know, they predict what you're going to do, so they do the opposite because if they don't, they're not going to take your money. So you're bound to lose if you're just relying on technical analysis on fundamentals because they know exactly what chart you're looking at. The millions of people look at the center. Oh, I've looked at the charts. I know where it's going to be a sell and a buy. No, because they know that. They see the same chart. <laughs> They're not going to give it to you. If they give it to you, if they let you buy it at that level, then they're not going to take your money. They're there to take your money. So are the markets rigged? 100% they're rigged. But thank God they're rigged. I am happy they are rigged. I'm happy the stock markets are rigged. So how do we use this to our advantage? Okay. First of all, I am absolutely over the moon that stock markets are rigged. Since I found it's rigged and fixed, I said, thank God they are fixed and rigged. And people still don't believe they are rigged. People say, oh, demand and supply, oh, price of dollar, price of this, gold has gone up, and all of them come out wrong because they're rigged. So it, they don't move to any kind of logical uh, pattern most of the time. And imagine if the markets, imagine if the US markets were not rigged, they were not fixed every day. Then you would have all kinds of rumors, you would have certain parties influencing it, taking it up and down. You would never make money, it would be such a mess. It, it, it's such a, such a chaos. How could you possibly make money? It would be like uh, trading some stocks, which some news comes from here and there. But when you're rigged, when they're rigged, when I know, okay, today they're going to, from here to 
New Year, they're going to take Dow Jones from 18 to 19,000 plus and then 20,000. So I know that's their plan. So I can predict that. So I can bet on that because it's rigged. Yes, if it was left to like supply and demand and this trader buying that or that rumor coming from there, it would go up and down and go nowhere and nobody would make money. It wouldn't be a market worth uh, trading on. And I would say try to figure out the macro geopolitical agendas and the psychology of the market rather than the technical and fundamental analysis.